I think that the thresholds that people run into, and there's thresholds in the history of a business, uh, the life cycle of a business that you're always going to bump into. One is expanding outside yourself. Like when you're a startup, you do every single thing yourself. One is like, how do you expand yourself and add people? And then there's revenue thresholds, a million dollars, two million dollars, somewhere in there is typically a revenue threshold where your, your business is doing business with uh, either the volume, you might just have one customer, but now you're doing it with one customer much higher volume, or you have a much higher volume of customers, um, is too much for your startup systems to support. So you have to do a first grade level upgrade of system upgrading. And that also includes people upgrading. Then there's typically the $10 million mark, um, where that will happen again at a higher level. A $20 million mark will happen again at a, another level, 50 to $100 million, where that will happen again. So there's these stages that you have to get past in business. And until you figure out how to do that, once you figure out how to do that, the stages are much easier to get past. And the secret is, is relinquishing control, developing systems, investing in education and uh, betterment of yourself and your team. That's just the whole secret to expanding you know, much quicker than most people can expand. Most people don't want to get the control up. Most people want, don't want to develop themselves or other people. They don't want to invest in the time. They don't want to invest in the resources to be able to do that. And they get stuck in the niche or the mold that they're in and not able to expand out of it because they literally limit themselves. So more specifically, are you talking about self-educating yourself? Okay, how do I manage 10 people versus just the two that I started with or 30 people or 50 people? Or is it like actual systems, like a, like an accounting system we need to keep track or inventory system? To, or is it both? Or? It's both, yeah. You'll see a lot of small, like small shops or small-minded shops just not getting out of the mindset of, I, I'm going to do this all myself. And doing this all yourself, you can grow a business to about a million bucks, you know, and that's doing great. And for some people, that model is, I like, you know, sometimes you look at them like super envious, like, mm -hmm. oh man, I would, I would love that, you know, because you don't have any people to boss around and stuff, but you're not going to get past that stage until you figure out how to systematize and how to people ties like that system. A system, first of all, you need to document your processes. Then you need to put those processes into a system. Then you need to train people on how to use that system. And then you got to make that system better. So that's that's a process, you know, workflow in, in a circle. You got to first document what you do. Then you got to put it in a system how to, that runs it. And then you got to train people how to use that system. And then you got to make it better. It's ever evolving. I think a lot of the times people don't want to make that step. And that step could be not wanting to add the person, not wanting to invest in the system, not training people how to use that system. A lot of times that step, and this is what our fault, is we invested in systems and we invested in people. We didn't freaking write any of it down. Our systems were developing, but no one knew how they were developing. The people that were developing the system didn't like, come back. So now we're working on documenting the process and tying that into the system and then training it better and then making it better. So it's, it's more flowing versus randomly making it better, randomly making a system for something that you know, people might be working on two different systems that actually solve the same problem. Are you guys say, okay, we're just going to invest in the people and let the revenue kind of catch up from there and the systems and that investment there? Or is already the business kind of grown past where you need the people and you're just filling holes? No, you have to invest uh, ahead. You know, there's no way there's no way to do it if you don't invest ahead. You know, if you if you wait for it to come, it'll never get built, you know, and you have to build it and then it will come. There's two things that are certain, work and money. Work expands the amount of time available to do the work. Mm -hmm. Money expands the amount of money that is available. So, and you put your own mindset into each of those. Like if you look at how you live or how you run your business, you can always live, you can always run your business on less, guaranteed. People do it all the time. The businesses that stress themselves purposely do better. That's why more ideas come out of bad economies. That's why the best inventions come out of depression, depression times. That's why the most startup businesses come out of recessions. It's just physiological nature that it allows you to do that. So if you purposely invest and lower your, your money potential, but you're doing it smartly, you're going to figure it out. And if you just play the safe game, you might never figure it out. You have just as much risk of running out of, running in, out of business, you know. Gotcha. Yeah, that's very interesting talking about investing ahead. So it seems like, especially when you nailed your traction, you, you realize that this was a need. People are buying. It's growing. That's when you know you, you feel a lot more comfortable to start investing ahead and planning and putting the systems in place. If you're still proving your business model, it's okay not to have systems, not to invest in people. You're still proving it. But once you've proven that that works, like people will come back and they will order again from you, and you can get another another one of those customers 
Once you've proven that, and the earlier you can invest, the more you can invest in, in developing those systems, people, and, and processes, processes, systems, and people in that order, the more expandable you, you'll become. Got it. Awesome. Yeah, I think that's great uh, advice, even on the small scale, especially if people are looking to continue to grow and create that bigger business over time.